Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I just wanted to bring a word of encouragement out of the book of Psalm 91 um, to you this morning. Um, the Spirit of the Lord was just hovering upon me all night. He does every night, but last night was just like, it was so <laughs> obvious and so thick and so um, present, you know. Um, every time I toss and turn to try to find a comfortable spot or take a sip of water, um, it's just like he was right there and the only thing that was permeating and hovering upon me was his presence and him speaking Psalm 91. And um, just so you know, um, since uh, the day that America signed into um, the um, to legalize gay marriages in our nation, that was what June 28th or so, June 27th, 28th, 2015, last year, the Lord began to give me dreams of um, America and of Psalm 91. So since then, I've had many dreams of military invasions, um, you know, bomb dropping on America, five rapture dreams, um, dreams of the Lord returning as the lion from Judah and um, heaven's armies riding out of the clouds on white horses, um, tsunami, earthquakes, all these dreams within the last year. And since America has legalized um, gay marriages, he's given me a dream immediately after that. And in that dream, although I did not um, share it on the video because I had, had not um, began sharing my testimony on videos um, with all my dreams, at that time but I did share it on my Facebook then um, so I don't remember all the details but the details I do remember was vivid and it was um, two children like in their early teens and one was uh, the younger one about maybe 10 and they're just hugging on each other lost devastated fearful and they were wearing black um, and they were looking upon the land of desolation it was it seemed as though a war um, of some sort just flattened destroyed and desolated the land and that's what they were looking at and they were so scared they were so afraid and just to the right of them above up above was the presence of Almighty God and he was just hovering there like you know clouds by day as he led the children of Israel he was just hovering um, they're waiting, just waiting, like, come to me, I will shield you, I will protect you, I will guide you, I will provide for you, I will nurture you and love on you. But these children, they had become orphans, they did not know that they had a father, a heavenly father that loved them and that wanted to provide for them. So instead of running into his shelter, they took a left and went their own ways. And then the Lord told me this, America has lost her identity, they've lost, we've lost our identity in Christ, our Lord and Savior. We've lost, we've lost it all. We're lost, as a nation we're lost. And um, if you do not believe this, then I don't know what to tell you. But, um, so that was a prophetic dream of what's to come, and the fact that he would not leave me alone last night while I was sleeping, and for hours until I woke up, you know, just his presence hovering and speaking Psalm 91 over me, and I believe that he's put it in my heart to share this word to encourage his children to come to him, to run um, under his wings, under his shelter, his protection, because... The days of desolation is coming. I really believe that with all my heart. And if we take heed to God's word and follow his instructions, we will be kept safe. I didn't say that. His word said that. And that's why he wants me to share this this morning with you. So I'm going to get started here. Excuse me. Psalm 91, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. 
I want to go back to he who dwells. That's the key word, dwells. To stay, to sit, not to run in and out as we uh, see fit and when we feel like it, but to continually abide in him, his word in us. We're in him and he's in us. We're one, inseparable, faithful. And then I will skip to verse 3. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snares and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampant. And my recent dream um, on May 28th, that's also on my video. Um, I dreamt that America was being bombed and um, as I was screaming with my hands covering my ears and um, just dugging, I saw a black massive shield over my head that kept me safe from the bombs. They were huge bombs. They were just pounding the land, pounding, pounding, pounding. It was thunderous. The earth shook. I shook. And I was scared, and all I could do was call out the name of Jesus, 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 Father, please have mercy, please have mercy, please have mercy. And I remember that I was not touched, and I was so worried about my family that I knew was there with me, but I did not see them. But um, in this dream, again, God was my shield, as he showed me in the other four or five dreams, <laughs> at least, that he was my shield, my covering. And he's faithful to his word, to those who are faithful to believing him and obeying him. So ten thousands at your right, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousands at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. And I want to elaborate on what God means by the wicked, because we think as wickedness as um like you know, maybe drunk driving or hitting somebody, robbing, stealing, lying, um, you know, adultery, fornication, all of those things. Yes, those things are wickedness in the sight of God. But it goes much further than that. We may not agree with his word, but his word is true and his word is life. And if we live by his word, we will have life as he's promised. So I'm going to go back to Psalm 50, uh, verse 16 and 17. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instruction and cast my words behind you. As you can see, wickedness to God is different than our definition of wickedness. Wickedness to him is when we hate his instructions and we do not follow his word and obey him. You know, it's rebellion, it's disobedience to, the, to God's words. That's what he calls wickedness. And since he's God and we're not, um, and he's got all the power and we don't, um, and he is the righteous judge, um, uh, King Jesus, who is coming back. To judge, to rule, to reign. And he showed me that in a dream November 28, 2015. That's also in my video. That is settled. That has settled in the heavens. And that will come to pass soon. So we need to take his word. Follow his instructions. Eat his word. Like the prophet Jeremiah said. When your word came, I ate them. And we need to live by his word. Abiding in him. And he in us. And verse 9 is one of the most important verses too. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. If you make the most high, not Allah, not Buddha, not what other gods are out there? Well, you know, many, many gods. Actually, um, if you want to bring it home, in America, our gods might not be Allah or Hindu or Buddhist God or anything like that. But our gods are in America is different. It's the God of comfort, um, the God of idolatry, worshipping things that were created by the minds and hands of man as opposed to the living, 
almighty, holy God himself, who created the men and gave them wisdom to create those things that we love and worship so much, you know, like um, our phone, for example, um, our hobbies, you know, um, I, uh, idolatry and laziness, you know, um, just uh, doing things that we feel like doing, spending all the time in the world and the money and the talent and uh, passion and, and interest, devotion, commitment to everything under the sun except the almighty, living, holy God. That is our God here in America, the God of money, sex, um, you know, the pride of life, the comfort of life, um, wealth, and just so many things. But um, let me get back on track. Verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So we have our parts to do. And that part is verse 9. If we make the Most High our dwelling place. And dwelling means to sit, to stay, and like abide in me and I will abide in you. If your word, if my word remains in you, and I am with you, in you, and will be with you forever until the end of time. That's the Lord's promise for us, but we have to do our part. We have to dwell. We have to sit still in His presence and not run off and do our own things. Um, like my six-year-old who loves to run off um, without holding my hands when we're crossing the street and I have to tell him all the time, you know, hold mommy's hands because there's a lot of cars going to and fro and you could get hurt. It could hit you. So um, it's his choice, but I, usually it's mine. I just snatch him and it's like, come here, you're coming. So, um, but with God, he's not going to snatch us like that. He gives us free wills to choose and we must choose wisdom we must choose his instructions which is life amen so i pray that this word will bring encouragement to you and um it, of all the things that i have sensed and seen not just in my own dreams but other people around the world having these similar uh same type of dreams and um all the things that are coming to pass in biblical prophecy, I believe it's about to get very, very, very dark and desolate, like those dreams that the Lord has been showing me. And our only refuge, our only fortress is abiding and dwelling under the shadow of the Most High. Thank you for watching. May the Lord bless you, keep you, guide you, lead you, protect you, and may we abide in Him every moment of every day. Amen. God bless you and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.